Energy prices have been going up dramatically the last few years. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over some things that I have done to help lower my energy bill. But for the most part, I am gonna stick with your electric bill in this video. According to Green Logic Energy, air conditioning accounts for nearly 50% of the electric bill here in the United States. So if you wanna lower your energy bill a large amount, you're gonna to have to tackle that air conditioning and heating part of your house. So the one thing I've done to lower my air conditioning and heating bill is I do not run my big whole home four ton or five ton air conditioning unit, the big traditional ones that most houses have overnight. I mean, why should I air condition and heat two to 3000 square feet when all we're using is the bedrooms for all night, which is like accounts for less than 20% of the house. So what I've done is I installed a mini split in my bedroom and I've got one that I'll link, I'll link to, I'll put a card at the end of this video on. It's the EG4 29.5 SEER mini split. It's just made for a bedroom. So it's just one unit and it's so energy efficient. I literally wired it right into the electric outlet in my room. So at night I just run that and I have it on cold. I have it on 68 degrees. So I keep the bedroom extremely cold, but I'm not having to run my whole house air conditioning now. So I let my house and I'm in central Texas. So I'll let my house get up to 78, 80 degrees overnight. And in the morning, we'll turn the whole house AC back on to cool the rest of it. But for me, it just never made sense to cool off that entire house when we're not using hardly any of it. Now, I can understand if you're in Las Vegas where it's 120 degrees and even at midnight, it's still like 100 degrees where you'd have to run your air conditioning overnight. So I get that. But most of us throughout the U.S., we don't have those type of nights. I'm in central Texas where it's hot. It was 108 yesterday and 99 as I'm sitting here right now, but I can still turn my AC off at about nine o'clock at night, my big house AC, and just run my mini split in the bedroom, or we have 5,000 BTU window units in the guest bedrooms where we can do the same thing. And as I mentioned, we keep our bedrooms like at 68 degrees. So, so we're not skimping on air conditioning those bedrooms, that's for sure. And the mini split I use in my bedroom, that's the EG4 29.5 SEER mini split. That thing runs on average like 300 to 325 watts overnight. So it uses virtually no electricity. Now the window AC units, the 5,000 BTU ones, those run more around 400 to 500 on average overnight, depending on how hard you're running them. So not quite as efficient as the mini splits, but still a heck of a lot better than running my whole home AC, which is with the HVAC unit and the big AC unit running. It's about 3,500 watts it takes to run that thing. So not efficient at all. And another benefit to having just small air conditionings in the bedrooms is, I'm sure it's happened to you because it sure has happened to me, your air conditioning breaks, your whole house AC breaks or something goes wrong. It's 105 degrees and all the AC technicians in the area are booked out for weeks and you can't get somebody out to fix it. So you're either gonna have to sweat like crazy and have your house at 90 degrees plus inside there, or you're gonna have to go spend money on a hotel room. With these air conditioners in your bedrooms, you can hole up in a bedroom if you had to and wait out that heat until your AC technician was able to get out to you. So I see that as another huge benefit. It's like an insurance policy with air conditioning. Now, another thing that I do that helps is put blackout curtains over all the windows that get that direct sunlight coming through during the day. Those blackout curtains can do a lot to help keep your home a lot cooler. Now it's going to be darker in those rooms, but in my opinion, when it's in the peak summer and it's over hundred degrees, it's worth it. And another thing you can do is raise your whole home air conditioning thermostat to about 78 degrees. Now I like it to be 72 in my house, but the difference between 72 and 78 degrees when it comes to your whole house air conditioning running is dramatic. So, Put it at 78 degrees, run fans during the day. Fans use a fraction of the electricity, whether that's you know your ceiling fan up on the ceiling or whether that's the standalone small fans you can have. Use those, that will help tremendously. And your water heater is also a huge consumer of electricity, whether that's an electric, traditional electric water heater, or whether that's a gas or propane water heater. You could turn that water heater down to more of the lower setting, especially during the summertime, and use a lot less electricity or propane or natural gas that way. So that's another thing you can do. And actually what I've done is installed a hybrid water heater, which actually has heat pump technology and it's way more efficient than using your standard traditional electric water heater. And I have a bunch of short videos on my channel that you can click on and check out where I kind of discuss that water heater and how efficient it is. I actually do have a long form video on my channel as well that I did, I don't know, probably a month ago. 
So feel free to browse my channel and find that as well. And the biggest thing I've done to virtually eliminate my electric bill, not quite, but almost, is I installed a whole home solar system with battery storage that I installed myself. Now I did spend a lot of money on that, probably about $35,000, which that was a few years ago. So now you could probably get the same system for around $25,000 because it seems like the only thing that's actually deflated in price has been solar products. But the way my solar system works is I use solar and battery storage as priority. So my house uses that. And then if my batteries get below 20%, then the grid will kick in just a little bit to run my house until the sun comes back up and I have enough solar power to run my entire house again and store energy into those batteries. And a benefit to that system is I don't have to worry about the grid going down, whether it's long-term outage or a short-term outage, doesn't matter. I have power no matter what for my well, because I have a deep water well here on my property and for air conditioning, which is very important in the summertime, especially if you lose power. So I don't have to worry about that. So that's another benefit. And I've got a ton of videos on how I did my system on my channel. So feel free to check those out. And with that solar system, I'm shielded. If electricity prices skyrocket, I don't need to worry about it. So that's a huge relief. So that definitely gives me peace of mind. So is a system like that right for you? I don't know. Feel free to browse my channel, check it out, see what it entails. I love it, but it's not for everybody. Oh, and a lot of you probably think that off-grid solar means you got to live in a tiny cabin you know, washing your clothes with a washboard and using a wood burning stove. That's not the case. Solar technology has come a long way just in the last 10 years, literally. You can run heaters, you can run air conditioning, water heaters. I mean, you don't have to sacrifice your standard of living anymore if you want to be on an off-grid solar system. It really just depends on how big your budget is for the batteries. So if that interests you, make sure to subscribe to this channel and you'll start seeing my videos pop up in your suggested feed. Other than that, make sure to like this video as well, and we'll see you all in the next video.